Hey, welcome back, Shoot Extraordinary Conference. We are so excited to have you here as we continue to learn and to grow and to become extraordinary together. I am joined right now by our great friend, Kathleen Clemens. Kathleen, how are you? I am wonderful, and I'm so excited about this conference. Yes, so are we, and we're so excited to have you here as we take adventures into understanding and learning and growing with Lens Baby. Can you tell me a little bit about your journey and how you became a Lens Baby photographer? Sure. Um, I started shooting in 2003, 2004, and uh, discovered Lens Baby in 2005. And around that time, I started photographing primarily flowers, fell in love with them, and uh, using Lens Baby to shoot them changed the way I shoot and really let me show the world the way I see it. So um, excited to share some of that today. Yeah, that's really beautiful. And, and often as photographers, you know, I always come to this idea that our pictures tell stories for us. And you do that in such a beautiful way through flowers. Can you tell everyone who's watching who may not know what to expect as they get into your course here this morning? Sure. I'm going to start off with my start in uh, lens baby photography. And then I'm going to move on to my journey with the lens baby velvets specifically and how I use them, um, what I use the different velvets for, you know, what situation, what flowers, and then um, hopefully at the end I will, um, I'm going to come up with some of my most frequently asked questions, which hopefully will um, answer any questions that you guys have about it. If not, I'd be happy to answer uh, your questions afterwards. That's amazing. We're super excited and can't wait. Shoot Extraordinary Conference. Don't forget, follow us on Instagram at LensBabyUSA. Tell all your friends we're going live and it's time to learn a little bit more. We'll see you guys in the classroom. This is Kathleen Clemens. So in, in an ideal world, I would be coming to you from a beautiful garden on a lovely cloudy day filled with flowers, but this is December. I live in Maine and we have a pandemic going on. So I will instead uh, show you how I use the velvets in this format. So I'll tell you a little bit about my journey with Lens Baby in general and about each of the velvets and how I use them. And I will hopefully answer some of your questions about Lens Baby velvet lenses. So let's get started. So my introduction to Lens Baby was in 2005, and the first Lens Baby I owned was the 2.0. It was one of the Bellows models where you squeezed the lens in order to focus. It's a picture of me in 2005 with the teleconverter on my um, Lens Baby 2.0. Aperture was controlled with small rubber rings that you put right into the lens. And that's how I got my start. And I immediately fell in love with the selective focus and blur that this lens provided. So these are the three first lenses. There was the original Lens Baby, the 2.0, and then the Lens Baby 3G, which to this day has always been my least favorite model of lens baby. So here are some images from my very first day with my lens baby 2.0 fresh out of the box. I received the lens in November, put it right on my camera, it went for a walk around the block. Subject matter was limited but there were some drying hydrangeas in the neighborhood. So if you look at these, is my focus great? No. <laughs> it really wasn't. It's not bad in the image on the left but even though um, I, I didn't feel like I mastered the lens certainly right out of the box. There was something here that I absolutely loved, the bokeh, the, the blur, and I fell in love with my lens baby that very first day. So I kept working, um, trying to get some focus. I got a little better. Um, I also learned how to, how to use the blur when I really didn't need anything in focus like the image on the left and how to get that sharp selective focus in the feather shot. So the more I worked, the easier it got. So then Lens Baby came up with the optic swap system where you would buy one lens, which is really a holder, and you could swap in and out different optics with different effects, different focal lengths. 
Okay, and I fell in love with those. It was a lot easier to change the aperture. Didn't have to drop in discs anymore because the apertures are right on the optics themselves. Worked hard, mastered those. So I really feel that using a lens baby has allowed me to show the world how I see it. And using these lenses have helped me to find my voice as an artist. And then in uh, 2005, Lens Baby came out with the the first velvet. Right now there are three velvets. In, um, in April of 2005 was the Velvet 56, June 2017 the Velvet 85, and last April 2020 the Velvet 28. So I was lucky enough to be able to beta test the Lens Baby Velvet 56. So let's talk about a few things that you need to know about velvet lenses. These lenses are fully manual. There's no auto anything, no auto focus, no auto anything at all. You can shoot them on either manual or aperture priority. I'm usually using aperture priority for flowers. The aperture will be selected right on the lens, not in your camera. So there will not be any aperture or lens info in the EXIF data. You'll be able to see the ISO and the shutter speed, but you will not be able to see your aperture or what lens you used. What you see is what you get in focus, and by that I mean with a straight lens, in order to see how much is going to be in focus, you have to push your depth of field preview button. With a lens baby, what you're looking at, what you're seeing in your viewfinder is what is going to be in focus. Now you need to be sure that your camera's diopter is set correctly for your vision if you're new to manual focus. If you're used to using autofocus and you have not set your camera's diopter, check your manual. It's very, very simple to do. So the Velvet 56 is a 56 millimeter f1.6 lens. You can see right in this photo that the apertures are on that lower dial. Okay. The minimum focus distance of this lens is 5 inches and again it's a fully manual lens. So this is the shot um, that made me fall in love with my Velvet 56. I was beta testing uh, and it was winter I believe and I bought myself a bouquet of yellow, uh, sorry, of pink daisies and, um, and I was, you know, shooting along and then I stopped and looked at the back of my camera and when I saw this shot I started to cry uh, because the the way I see flowers was on that LCD I could see that on the back of the camera you know the way I see was in that photo and I also knew at that moment that some of my best work was ahead of me and that was a really really powerful emotional moment for me so of course I worked my subject. Here are some more shots from that, that very first shoot with the Velvet 56. The Velvet 56 provides a beautiful, soft, ethereal glow across the image. It's not selective, it's across the image. And you control how much of that glow with your aperture. Okay, so let's look at some uh, same subject at different apertures to see that glow. So this is wide open at f1.8. You can see how strong that glow is. Really not seeing any natural texture. You know, the lines are all very soft. At f2, you're starting to get a little more definition. Nothing I would call sharpness, but more definition, a little less glow. At f2.8, a little bit more. You know, the lines are a little stronger now. At f4, you can see most of the glow is more to the outer edges and there's more definition in my subject. At f5.6, the depth of field is deeper, less glow. All right, as you stop down. Now, I, I don't shoot at these apertures very often, but I will show you some, ap some examples of when a, a small aperture makes sense. And at f16, right, just out around the outer edges, deeper depth of field. Here's another couple of examples of the same subject. A calla lily at f2, look at the strong diffused glow around the edges. Okay, the edges are kind of blending right into my background here. If you look at f4, there's more definition, a little bit less of a glow. So as you stop down, that soft dreamy look will be a little less, a little less, a little less. Okay, here's two more examples at f2 
and at F4. Okay, you can see that the lines are a lot stronger at F4, starting to lose that glow a little bit. This is at F4 as well, starting to get a little bit of petal texture now. So you, you can go soft with this lens, or a little soft, or more detail. You know, it's a really, really versatile, versatile lens. This is at F11. This dahlia had a lot of depth to it, and by that I mean petals that were coming out of the flower toward me. That's a lot of depth. I would have ended up with um, blurry distractions if I had not stopped down to a small aperture. And you can see there's still softness around the edges here at f11. All right, this is at f8. I needed to get some strong detail in the center and then softer toward the edges. So you can really see how versatile this lens is. This is at f11 straight out of the camera which is another thing that I love about my Lens Baby Velvets. All my Lens Baby lenses really is that they need very little, if any, post-processing, okay? And a soft version. So, you know, how much of that glow is going to be in your image is totally up to you and you will choose different apertures for that. And it's not just for flowers, this is wide open. Hey, you can see it makes a beautiful, very dreamy look. And this is my cat Kella at f5.6. So again, certainly not only for flowers. Then Lens Baby came out with a Velvet 85. Okay, this has a um, minimum focus distance of nine and a half inches away. And again, fully manual. So the minimum focus at nine and a half inches might sound like a lot, but it's a longer lens, all right? So here's that lens at f2.5. Again, very soft, very dreamy. You're not really seeing strong petal edges. And at f4, see the difference. I'm starting to get petal texture. I'm getting petal edges in focus, all right? And you can go from really, really soft and dreamy, wide open, to more definition at f4 just like the Velvet 56. Here's f5.6. This flower has a very detailed center, so I stopped down more. And again, at f11, this flower had all those tiny water drops. I certainly want, wouldn't want to make those just blurred. Okay, Very versatile lens, depending on what you, the artist, wants to show in the flower. Do you want it very soft and dreamy? Do you want that detail? You can get all of that with just one lens, right? You can see here that you start to get more and more detail, more texture as you stop down, just like with the Velvet 56. Okay. And again, not always for flowers. Uh, you can shoot uh, with street scenes with it. I happened upon this gorgeous dancer in downtown Charleston and if you look closely you will see that the the blur is around the outer edges. Look at her foot down at the bottom but I could still get the detail I needed in her. Okay this is wide open so if you really really want to go soft and dreamy with a landscape you certainly can with this lens. And then last spring the velvet 28, so this one is 28 millimeters. It's an f2.5 lens, and the minimum focus distance is two inches away, which is pretty darn cool. Okay, so I can get right up next to my subjects now if I want, or I can pull further back. It's great for really large flowers, one I want to, to include a lot of background in my subjects, but more often than not, I'm thinking Velvet 28 when I want to get in super close. All right, a couple of more examples from that lens. Again, not just for flowers, feathers, shells, landscapes. I really love having the Velvet 28 in my bag because if I want to stop down, I can have just a regular wide angle lens. This is the Portland headlight. Or I can choose to open the lens up for a soft, dreamy look. 
same thing in this situation. Do I want to make a very dreamy ghostly image or I really want to pull out sharp detail? Those are artistic choices that I get to make with one lens. So here are some tips for getting started with a velvet lens. Put it on your camera and leave it there. Okay, uh, at least for a week, if not for several weeks. That will make you really use the lens. Experiment with aperture, okay? Focus is going to be easiest at f4 and f5.6 in the beginning. That soft diffused glow, wide open or close to it, might make it tough for you to focus. Watch your exposures. When you are using a manual lens, get used to checking the back of your camera or your histogram when you're using it. So if things are too dark in your viewfinder focus, when you're focusing using a small aperture, let's say you're using f8, f11, all right? Change the aperture to f4, set your focus, and then you can change the aperture back to the small aperture. Setting it at f4 will let more light in, will make it easier for you to focus. Right? That's a little tip for that. So if you find using this lens that you are struggling with focus, here are a few tips. I want you to check to be sure that your camera's diopter is set correctly for your vision. If you are hand holding, do you have a good fast shutter speed? Don't try and hold these lenses at a 15th of a second. Ask yourself and be really honest here, are you steady enough to hand hold or should you be on a tripod? I think that's an individual decision that we all need to make. Could you be closer than the lens can focus? Okay, let's say you have the Velvet 56 and you're trying to get four inches away from your subject. The lens cannot focus at four inches. The minimum focus distance of that lens is five inches. It is really, really important for you to learn what the minimum focus distance is for each of your lenses, all right? Again, if you're having trouble focusing, try a smaller aperture for a little bit less glow and more subject definition, all right? I'm, I'm not saying sharpness, I'm saying definition, all right? So let's go over some questions that I get asked a lot about the velvets. So Kathleen, how do you choose which velvet to use? All right, so the main differences between the three are focal length and the minimum focus distance. So sometimes a choice is really obvious, okay? And other times I'll shoot a subject with several different lenses, several different velvets even. So, you know, I'll ask myself and look at the flower and how close do I need to get or how close can I get, okay? How large is my subject? Am I including background? Do I need the compression that that longer focal length of the 85 can provide? And are there distracting elements that will be included if I choose a wider lens, like the 28? So let's look at those individually. So here's a setup in my studio with the Velvet 56 and a printed textured background that is 11 by 17 in the background. So at the Velvet 56, if I move in close to my subject, that lens is too wide I cannot fill the background with that printed image. But if I switch to the Velvet 85, that longer focal length allows me to fill that frame with that background. So a longer focal length sort of brings the background forward. It's the lens compression of a longer focal length. So if I um, have this sort of a situation, I'll reach for the Velvet 85, okay? I'll also reach for the Velvet 85 if there's a beautiful background that I want to include, and I, but I want to be sure it's well blurred. That longer focal length will provide better background blur. So let's say I need to get in closer, but not super wide. I don't want to get into just the center of this flower. Then I'd probably choose the Velvet 56. If I want to move in super close or go really wide, then I would think Velvet 28, okay? And sometimes I shoot with all three of them. This is some milkweed I shot really early in the morning last week. There's, I did some with the Velvet 28. I did some with the Velvet 56. And I did some with the Velvet 85, and I love them all, okay? Here is the same flower with the Velvet 85, the Velvet 56, and the Velvet 28. My point here is don't get too hung up on which velvet to use when. Choose one, 
use it and see what you can do with it okay these are extremely versatile versatile lenses I just don't want you to get hung up on which one and that that is the question that I get most often and to be perfectly honest sometimes I'll just start shooting with whatever lens was still on my camera from the last time I used it all right so don't worry too much about which lens to use here's another question that I get asked a lot do you have a favorite lens baby velvet well I do and it's the velvet 85 that longer focal length is really really wonderful for shooting flowers and that's what I photograph most often you know if I'm going to include background I know that it will be well blurred and again no post processing these are straight out of my camera with that velvet 85 I can easily fill the frame with my subject I also love the velvet 85 for portraits this is my granddaughter Madison the shot on the left was with the velvet 85 at 28 the shot on the right was f4 I had such a ball shooting her with this lens I did a whole um, bunch of the different faces of Madison Harper it's a beautiful beautiful lens for portraits again here's two more with that that f5.6 the image on the left of my daughter-in-law and granddaughter and my two granddaughters on the right that was at f4 you can see that you even you know at f4 with a portrait can you see that subtle glow it's just so beautiful for people and I wouldn't shoot people at with a 28 millimeter lens probably not as much with a 56 the 85 is beautiful for portraits and I can go really soft and blurry if I want with more of a glow or I can get more detail so Kathleen how do you tell which lens you used since it's not going to be in the EXIF data get that question a lot too this is my method it's very simple before I start shooting with the lens I take a photo of it with whatever lens is on my camera and then when I look through my images I can see that I'll see the picture of as in this case the sweet 50 and I know that all the images after that were shot with my sweet 50 and then I'll see another lens and I'll know that from that point on all of the next images are shot with that lens it's a really really simple way to do it you could also take a 3 by 5 card you could write the names of your different lens babies on it and take a picture of the word you know the velvet 56 or sweet 50 but I just take a picture of the lens and it works really well for me so you can see how I used it here this is when I was out shooting the milkweed and every time I changed lenses took a picture of the lens so I know that all the images after that until the next lens are with that lens works really really well now the question I get asked often is what apertures do you use most with your velvets so the three apertures that I use most often are well that's a typo it's f2.8 f4 and f5.6 at f2.8 I've lost a little bit of the glow but I have more definition in the lines of my subject and flowers are all about line shape color and texture okay at f4 I start to get a little more texture and again at f5.6 but at 2.8 there's still what I consider to be a beautiful ethereal look to the images but the glow is just not quite as strong the lines stand out more and I think that's important for flower photography so here are a couple at f2.8 you can see that there is still a soft glow but I have good lines Okay. at f4 more detail and now as I said you start to see the petal texture coming alive and f5.6 for when I need to go deeper I have a flower that has more depth that has more detail I'll move to f5.6 but as I said sometimes I go even smaller to f11 and sometimes wide open sometimes I really want just that soft beautiful ethereal glow totally up to me what effect I'm going to get with that same lens so another question I get are there times you do not use a lens baby yes and let me tell you specifically what those are so if I'm shooting in a public garden let's say a water garden 
and the flowers are not planted near the edge and they're far away and I certainly can't go into the pond, I'll use something with a longer focal length, most often my Canon 180 millimeter, right, for those times. Mostly uh, either flowers that are water flowers or flowers in a public garden that I cannot get up close to. I don't crop my images so I need to get that composition uh, at the time of the shoot and if I'm not in a place where I can really get close to my subjects then I'll choose a longer focal length. Same here if I'm shooting landscapes and they're a good distance away then I'm going to use a longer lens. Also if I'm doing the shooting through technique where I put a, my lens right up close to my subject wide open and create an ethereal blur of color in the foreground. And as soon as Lens Baby comes up with a 180 millimeter, I can put my Canon away and use all Lens Babies. That's just a subtle hint, Craig. Uh, a Lens Baby with a really long focal length would be just a joy to me. So um, another question I get is, you know, when do you choose to use the Composer Pro and your Sweet 50? People know that's a favorite for me or any of the other optics instead of a velvet, okay? This is a shot with the Sweet 50 right here. And if you really look at this, you can see that there's an area of sharp focus surrounded by blur. That's not the same effect as the velvet. The velvet effect is more across the frame. It's not selective. You're not going to have a, a tack sharp area in sharp focus surrounded by blur. It's a really different look. So here's the same subject, the one on the left, Sweet 50 with a plus four macro diopter at f4. So you can see the center and the petals over to the left, slightly off center, are tack sharp and they're surrounded by blur. There's also distortion in the background and some directionality in that blur when I bend the lens. Now the image on the right is the Velvet 85 at f2.8. Can you see that there's a soft diffused glow overlying that sharp detail, but it's an all over effect. It's not selective, okay? Here's a couple of more examples. Sweet 50 is on the left. You've got your sharp area in focus fading off to blur. So that area is surrounded by blur and the Velvet 85 at f4 is more of an all over effect. Okay, I hope that shows you the difference. And then of course with the Velvet 85 you could go for an all over glow for a totally different look. Okay, this is the Sweet 50 at 2.8, small area in focus, the rest goes to blur. So it depends on the effect that I'm going for. These are also with the Sweet 50 at F2. Um, I like to use F2 with the Sweet 50 often because I really love to sort of dance on the edge of seeing how little I can have in focus, get away with that, but yet still tell the story that I want to tell about my subject. So that's the difference for me as to when I'll use a velvet and when I'll use one of these sweets. Okay, here's another example. This is a Sweet 50 at f2.8, sharp area in focus surrounded by blur. So hopefully that shows you the difference and you will be able to see that in your own work. One more example, you can see the strong blur, yet a sharp area of focus. All right, so we're going to move on to your questions now. I hope this um, has really shown you how I use the velvets and how I've developed using the velvets and I look forward to hearing your questions. Thank you. Dreamy artistic images. Emotive and soulful imagery that extra dimension and quirkiness. Really unique images. Extraordinary results. Creamy boca and a dreamy feel. Creative and quirky landscapes. Unique blur effects. Fun flares. Poetic, onetic look. Something extraordinary. Wow, Shoot Extraordinary Conference, what an incredible presentation. Kathleen, good afternoon, how are you today? I am great, thank you. Good, that, that was powerful. I actually, at the beginning and talking about that first experience and getting emotional looking at the back of your camera, I thought to myself, wow, I know exactly how that feels. There's something really beautiful about what we do as photographers and capturing these moments that can really kind of transform us forever. How do you continue to stay emotional in your work after doing it for so long? Well, Craig keeps coming up with all of these new 
<laughs> new lenses for me to try and it starts all over again. You know, um, I, I just got the Spark 2.0 last week and I'm just, I'm having a blast with it. And it's, it, it feels very organic and it takes me back to my early days with my first lens baby, the Bellows lens. So it, it just continues on, Michael. Yeah, it's powerful, right? And I think about this as creatives, this journey of learning and education never learn, never ends, excuse me. And I would imagine much like myself, you're probably always diving into things like this, conferences and education and trying to grow and become a better photographer. And that's so much about what the Shoot Extraordinary Conference is all about, is giving people the tools. And this presentation was absolutely phenomenal. Um, I want to dive into to some of the questions here that we have right off the bat. Um, and that's because I want to use the most that we can of your time. And first, I want to, sorry, guys, we're doing this live. So hang on one second for me. Where did it go? There was a great question here. Okay, we're going to grab another one. So here's a question. I know this is a velvet course, but to Kathleen, what do you think of the Sweet 35 versus the Sweet 50? Well, the Sweet 35 is often a little wider for flowers than I would like. I love the shorter minimum focus distance of the Sweet 35, which is like seven inches and the Sweet 50 is more like 15. Um, so if I'm using a Sweet 50, I have a uh, one of the macro filters on from the Lens Baby macro filter kit. Most of the time, um, the plus four on there. Um, I, the, I think that I also think that I love the 50 so much because it brings me back to shooting with my Lens Baby 2.0 with the double glass optic in the beginning. And um, it just is a really good focal length for flowers. Yeah, I totally get that. And, and sometimes you have to have that extra little magnification to get the exact shot that you want to have. Um, right. Here's a really interesting question. This does not come up often from Cynthia. Do you use a tripod? <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I, you know, these lenses are light and I am, I am really steady right now, but as I get even older, <laughs> if, if that is not the case anymore, then I'll be on a tripod. But, you know, and that's a really personal thing. As I mentioned in my presentation, you need to know, you know, whether or not you are steady enough to handhold. If you're not, just, just use a tripod. So far, so good for me right now. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know what? There's always a time and a place for the tool that you need when you need it. Right. Um, here's a very interesting question. What, or I guess I'd say, where is your favorite garden to shoot? Uh, the Coastal Man, Maine Botanical Garden is a favorite. It's about an hour away from me. And I also love Longwood Gardens. Oh, nice. Yeah, that, that's beautiful. I hope to come out there and visit you and be a part of that one day. Um, right. From Donna here. Replying to Lynn's baby, I guess that's us. Um, <laughs> how do you remember the aperture as you shoot each flower? Um, I, I don't find it really necessary to, to know that. The only time I do is when I'm beta testing a lens. And then I will, um, I'm generally going through all of the apertures. And so I'm doing them in the same order. And so that I can easily tell that it's F2, 2, 8, 4, 5, 6, 8 along that way. You know, if you, when you're first learning the lens, I think that that's important um, for you to do. You can also write the apertures down, you know, take a picture of the aperture, um, which I have done when I'm beta testing sometimes as well. So um, it, it don't get too hung up on, on what aperture you shot it at. I have to know because I'm a teacher. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. And, and so that progression, are, is that something that you've been trained for yourself to go, all right, progressively, I'm going to start wide open and I'm going to stop down on every shoot that I do? Well, not necessarily. You know, if I just have gotten the lens and I'm beta testing, I'll usually find my sweet spot of area. And most of the time it's two, eight, four, five, six. And so I, if I just do those in the same order each time, I can easily tell what I shot the uh, subject at. Awesome. And from Linda, says, great job. Just bought the 85 millimeter. Love it. Um, one of the questions, I know you touched on it in, in the course, but some people may not have caught that part. If you were to only get one lens baby velvet, which would it be? I think I know the answer, but what would that be? Yeah, the velvet 85 is my favorite of the three. Yeah. Even though yeah. the Velvet 56 is the one that I had that strong reaction to, I, I really love the 85. And also because of the way I can use it for portraits of people. 
Yeah, and, and you do have portraits of people as well. And one of the questions here, it got lost in the feed, but it asks, what lens would you choose for portraits? Yeah, the, the, definitely the Velvet 85. I, I really love it for portraits. When my last granddaughter was born, I went to the hospital and filmed her, um, her three older sisters meeting her. And I was worried because, you know, I'm in a hospital setting. I thought I might need a Zoom. A zoom. I've got three little kids. So I, I shot the first half of the video that I made with my 24 to 70, switched over uh, to the Velvet 85. And, and when I looked at the images and put the video together, I could have slapped myself. <laughs> We're <laughs> not using the lens baby through the whole thing. Um, there was one of the photos in my presentation and that, that bit of a glow was just so beautiful. And, you know, I can tell where I stopped in, in the video and started using it. So lesson learned. Yeah. Well, you know, and that happens and, and you find that sometimes you're so caught up and especially in moments like that, no one would think of that until you're in retrospect. And that happens to me all the time. I'm like, oh, gosh, why didn't I do that thing? Duh. Um, here's an interesting question. Don't know what your thoughts are, but sometimes below F4, I get too strong a halo around my subject. I usually handle this by creating a blur layer at the edge. Any tips on how to handle this? Yeah, I, I see that more below 2.8. I think it starts to go away at 2.8. You'll see it more if you're shooting a light colored flower on a dark subject or a dark flower on a light subject, you'll, you'll see more. If you're shooting a flower on a similar colored background or with more of the same flowers in the back, it, you really won't have that issue. Um, that's that's why I like 2.8 better than two because it starts to go away. And if I still see it, I may go to F4. Dealing with in post-processing, you could do that. If you add a texture layer to the background, then you can often hide hide that haloing. Yeah, that's a great point. And, and from Regan, or Reagan perhaps, um, are you shooting raw or JPEG since you use images straight out of the camera? Okay, um, I, I shoot in raw. What I meant by straight out of the camera was that the image wasn't post-processed, resized only for my presentation. I, I do not shoot in JPEG ever. Got it. Yeah. And, and I think that when we have these tools like Lightroom and Capture One and all those, um, you know, you, you can do either if you want JPEG and you don't want to go through the process that's totally reasonable. But RAW just gives you that extra little bit of control. Right. Um, and then from Angela here, how much of your preference for the 85 depends on the fact that you're using a full frame camera versus a crop sensor? Or how would the crop sensor versus full frame influence one's choice? Amazing question, Angela. That, that is a great question. I do shoot full frame. I think if I was shooting on a crop sensor camera, the Velvet 56 would be my favorite. Is there a particular reason why? Uh, because it's it's going to be a longer focal length on on that, and it, you know it'll be close to the 85 depending on your on your crop factor. So yeah, most definitely. As we start to wrap up here, Kathleen, what I'm curious about is as you continue to progress as a photographer and, and step into education more and more all the time, what, if anything, is one key for someone who's stepping into lens baby? Well, give yourself t the gift of time when you first get a lens baby. You know, don't don't, don't rush yourself. As, as I mentioned in my presentation, put that lens on your camera and, and stick with it and play, allow yourself to play, shoot a lot of different subjects, shoot um, at a lot of different apertures, really put the time in to learn what that lens can do. Don't give up too soon, which I, I you know, I hear uh, people often, oh, I have one of those, but I never figured out how to use it. Give yourself that time. This isn't a half hour project, you know, when you get a new lens, you know, just let yourself play. Yeah, I, I think there's certainly something to that. And, and and as we start to head off here, I do have one more question for you. How do you handle and manage the learning curve of Lens Baby? Because now you've had the experience really through the gauntlet and we are constantly in <laughs> in this place of beta testing and more and more lenses, more optics, more things, some stuff we hand out to you guys and it never sees the light of day. But how do you handle handle and manage the learning curve of Lens Baby with the understanding that it's not as simple as point and click? Right, right. I, I still haven't handled the learning curve on the Edge 35. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, and it just, it's not great for the things that I shoot. So, um, you know, I again, it's it's just time and, and finding the lens that 
works best for what you like to shoot most often. So, you know, the, the edge is great. It creates, for those of you who don't know, a, a slice of focus, but that rarely works with the type of subjects that I shoot. So, you know, I just try, try, try. Um, I, you know, I've had some, some issues in the past with lenses that I, I've had to beta test, but I, I work through them. And, uh, and like I said, I give myself that gift of time. Yeah, and, and so much of it also what I hear, and I, not to put words in your mouth, but it's about finding what works for you. And you know what I, I love and I appreciate, and I know Craig will too, your comment in the beginning of the presentation about the 3G, right? And how, <laughs> you know, that is not particularly your favorite lens of all time. But that's what this is about, right? Finding what works for you. And, and with the vast array of products that we have at Lens Baby, there are so many different options that you can step in. And as you know, and I'm sure as you would suggest, it's really about experiencing and trying and seeing what happens. Yeah, you know, and I made the 3G and the control free work for me when I figured out that you don't, just because you can lock the focus, you don't have to. <laughs> so, you know, find what works for you. Yeah, absolutely. Kathleen, it was an absolute pleasure. This course was incredible. Um, shoot at Program Conference, please hit that like button, share, comment, tell a friend, show Kathleen some love. And we appreciate you so much. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Kathleen. And we will be back with our next presentation in 20 minutes. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Kathleen. We'll see you soon.